but I have a special, special treat for you guys tonight. Um, someone that I invited to come up. I was hoping she would come in. Her name is Tamisha and she has such a beautiful, beautiful, encouraging story. Tamisha, I wanna thank you for your patience uh, to come up in the space. Um, first of all, just thank you for sharing, um, Tamisha. Your email made me cry today, I have to tell you. Um, <laughs> it did, I was in the middle Aww. of working. Um, and when you send me that email, I literally burst into tears because, you know, as a coach, I get tired too. Um, <laughs> you know, when you're, you know, just like you're a therapist and you're dealing with clients, it gets tiring. And sometimes you're wondering if you're making an impact or you're making a difference. And when I got your email that you passed your exam, and I remember I coached you October of last year, and I forgot you told me about your disability. Um, that's what made me, it, I, tears just start coming down. I just wanted to thank you for that um, because it helped me remember why I do this work in the first place the way I do it. So one, thank you for coming in. Two, thank you for um, your wonderful email. Um, and when you're ready, please share your journey uh, with your colleagues about you know, what that journey was like for you despite the barriers you have because there's so many out here in the audience that need that pick me up. Um, so when you're ready, the floor is yours. Absolutely. I hope everyone can hear me okay. They can. Okay, great. Um, so my journey was somewhat long. Um, just as, just so everyone knows, I'm completely blind, no usable vision. So my journey in the social work world has been long because unfortunately people can be rather judgmental uh, despite how good your resume is, um, people can be judgmental about giving you a chance. So I got my bachelor's degree in 2010. Um, I started grad school in 2011, but night classes and just trying to balance everything was a bit too much. So I took a break, tried to find a job, and unfortunately, the only thing I could get eventually because someone gave me a chance was a volunteer opportunity with our local uh, agency that serves domestic violence victims so i did that for a year i uh, eventually got hired in 2016 put grad school on the back burner until 2020 and then i said you know what i'm gonna go back and do grad school but i'm going to apply to one school one and done if i don't get accepted that's it so i got accepted to yeshiva university graduated in 2021 with advanced standing um and then i was still working so i decided to put off the test because i, I was nervous about the whole process uh discovered shara in january of 2021 i believe um and so then that motivated me just hearing her story and everyone else's stories to know that i'm not alone and so I started the study process, joined Shara's group in October of 2021, uh, 2022, and then decided, you know what, stop procrastinating and take the test. I took practice tests with Shara and uh, to be honest with you, I was nervous, but I actually did way better than I thought that I would. Um, so I started the process of registering for the test, which is, kind of long because I needed special accommodations being um, a screen reading software, which works on my computer to read out the test to me. And just based on other colleagues of mine who are visually impaired who have taken the test, they were not lucky to get the screen reading software and they had actually had to settle for a reader. Um, but yes, all of my accommodations were approved and I took the test on April 4th and I passed one and done. Wow. One and done. Um, Tamisha, I have to say, um, was that your first time taking the exam? It was, yes. Wow. Um, now I'm kind of speechless. <laughs> that was not my experience <laughs> as well as so many others, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have to, to ask you, I mean, you have one of your senses gone. Yes. And despite you not being able to see, 
you passed your exam. Despite the limitations and barriers, you passed your exam. That has tremendous meaning than just passing the exam if we have to think about our own challenges throughout life. What support or advice would you give your fellow colleagues in regards to their own journey? Because they hear mine all the time. <laughs> but for you, I'm so thankful that you came in here because oftentimes we get caught up in our own stuff all the time. But when you, someone like you to say, I was blind, I passed my exam first with flying colors. That's amazing. But I also want to remind people that this was Tamisha's journey and it's not yours, right? And we can very easily say, well, damn, she did it. Um, you know, and go into that self-defeating thoughts of, uh, because she passed with flying colors and I didn't, I can't do it. And we can right. fall into that trap as well when we hear other people's stories. Um, and I want to be sure to let people know that everyone's journey with this exam is very different. One thing that does hold true of people that do take that step to move from the audience to flying out of this room as Tamisha did was taking action and not just sitting in this room, but taking action, getting support and getting help. Um, so Tamisha, I, I wanted to talk about that process with you uh, and that just your own thoughts, your mindset, as well as how powerful of a testimony, you, a gift that you're giving all of us. Because even though I'm on the other side of this now, I still struggle with my own thoughts. Absolutely. I still struggle with lack of confidence. And the fact that you've even given me confidence to continue doing what I'm doing, um, despite my own challenges, you've gifted me that by just sharing your own journey. Um, so I just wanted to pause and, and get your thoughts. And if you guys have anything, definitely feel free to put it in the chat as well. And I'll, I'll make sure that Tamisha hears it. Definitely. Um, so would my, mainly be remember it's your journey. It's else's, you know, everyone passes at their own rate, their own speed, more than once, whatever you need to do. I'll, I'll tell you right now, some of those questions were hard as hell. I mean, there were too many research questions, questions for my liking. <laughs> and that's one of the things I didn't seriously focus on. <clears throat> but, you know, know that you're not alone, know that other people are going through this journey with you. I think that's the thing that really helped me to focus on the fact that the study group was supportive to me because it was like, you're not the only one doing this. You're not the only, you're not going to be the first social worker to take this test and you're certainly not going to be the last. And, and just remember that you got this, like you have to go in with that positive mindset. And even if you fail, it's like, okay, pass or fail, I did my best. And right there, I think you said the most important thing of the whole entire night, that despite pass or fail, you went in there with the mindset that you were going to do your best. And that's all you can do, right, is, is do your best. And I, again, to me, she had such a tremendous gift because so many of us again get caught up in our own stuff all the time mm -hmm. and you've given us such a gift of just sharing your own pivotal journey of what you did may i ask you because i know this was a while ago what was very helpful for you in the boot camp that we did what was it that helped you um and what made it different from other things that if you've been exposed to or tried or heard of I think just repeatedly practicing the questions, um, you know, really, you can read all day, you can read textbooks and study guides and all these different things, but really being able to sit with these questions and learn how to answer them. I mean, I heard Shara's voice many a time, okay, uh, pick the ones that are obviously not the correct answer, and then choose out of the two that are and figure out which one is the best and also um, just remembering that this is a national exam and not to focus on what your experiences are. I, I, you know, I think that really helped a great deal. Oh, man. Um, definitely, uh, again, I'm still kind of tongue-tied and speechless. <laughs> uh, and I say that to me because you are my first 
client I've ever uh, taught that was blind. There has been one other lady, uh, June 2021, her name was Shannon Shriver. She was deaf. She was my first deaf client. I'll never forget her. She's actually in private pra practice right now in Boston. Um, she was one other person I remember that I can honestly say had led me to tears like that. You would be, besides Zena, who is a homeless social worker who passed her clinical last wow. year with me, you would be the other one that had me literally in tears. Um, you've definitely given me a lot of strength as a coach, as a leader to keep supporting others because it it's tiring, that journey. You feel like you're alone and there's so many of people out there um, in the audience that know how hard it is and they need that support. And I cannot... I cannot thank you enough for coming in here um, and sharing with your colleagues um, because the helpers need help too. And I think that's something that we need to remember that we're, we're not invincible. People may look up to this, but we're very much human indeed. Uh, we both, we all have our struggles and despite your limitations, you passed. Um, and I think that is amazing that is encouraging um, on so many levels. Um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, 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 I'm still kind of, I'm just tongue tied because um, this is my third year doing this. And, you know, there are definitely times when I just like, I don't know if I could keep going anymore. I'm done. And then I'll get an email. I'll get a text. I'll get a phone call. And, and I'm back here again in the space of you've given me so much push to, tirelessly keep um, helping to get people licensed uh, in this community as well as uh, throughout the services that I provide. Um, you are the epitome of what uh, my dream was to start this space. I honestly have to say that um, of seeing my colleagues go from not being licensed to being licensed despite what the world says that we can't do or even our licensing board or our the ASW report those statistics you have definitely crushed the glass ceiling on them. I'm not sure if you're aware of what those statistics um, oh, of the yeah, that came out. <laughs> Do you have yeah. any idea, any inkling idea of what you have done? And I'm not just talking about you passing the exam, what you have done to, with, you know, the people that you'll be able to reach in a way that some of us will not having limitations. Uh, people that are disabled, uh, people that are often stigmatized, people that see their own disabilities, even the most invisible ones as labels, including the mental health conditions, because I had three of them. Um, you have turned it on its head. That's what I hope to do and continue doing. That That's why I came up here today, because honestly, I'm shy. I don't really do this, but it's important to make sure that the world knows, you know, we're, we as social workers are a strong group. Yes, we definitely are. Um, and your story is all, all non inspiring. And, um, as I told you before, Tamisha, I don't want to hold you too much in this space, but I really, I'm so appreciative. You give me such a gift as well as other social workers in here um, to keep them encouraged and keep them going tonight. I thank you for choosing me as your licensing coach um, so many months ago um, in the boot camp space. And I definitely wish you well on your journey. Please come back when it's time for that LC um, and definitely stay in touch. I would definitely want to make sure you stay connected. Definitely. And thank you for allowing me. To speak to oh no this was a beautiful gift for everyone in this room i don't <laughs> it was more of a thank you for coming in and sharing your story because stories matter stories impact um and they leave an imprint and i i can only imagine with this part of your journey being done the people that are waiting for you on the other side of that pass on the screen there's so many people that are waiting for you to gift them what they need because now you have that license to do it, um, which everyone in this room has the capacity to do. So please um, go out there and kill it. Um, any last words for your your uh, colleagues out before you leave the space, Tamisha? 
you guys, you got this. That that's it. Drop the mic. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. Drop. Yes. Definitely drop the mic. I I have to say you are um, fire. Thank you, Tamisha. Um, and thanks everybody for listening. And Tamisha, on that note, you get to fly out the nest, girl. You go. <laughs> Congratulations. Wow. Um, well, everybody, I'm kind of tongue-tied speechless. I know we have some new people in the room. Uh, Tamisha's um, story will definitely be on the podcast space that you guys will hear. Um, so definitely feel free to join that podcast space and I'll put the link up for you guys. But wow, I hope you guys feel inspired. I mean, I was, you know, I always share my story in this space. And for those of you that are new that don't know me, it took me 10 years to get my clinical license. Um, and I had a lot of barriers along the way, failed my master's exam, um, the first time by nearly points, same thing with my clinical, um, and had to wait a year to take it again. Some of you guys know that, that journey, that story very well that I tell. And the reason why I'm here, um, Tamisha definitely shared her journey. And I really hope I was hoping that she would come in and she did. Um, so I really hope you are inspired to stay the course, no matter what. Um, no matter how long it takes you, that that license belongs to you. You have done the work in terms of going to school to do what you need to do. That it doesn't matter how long it takes you at all. As long as you keep trying, that's what matters the most. So I am so excited for her, but I'm also excited for all of you. Um, because despite what you think your limitations are, I feel like none of you have any. It's a more so um, mindset shift that you have to make. So you now can say, I don't want to hear no excuses, y'all. <laughs> you have a lady that was blind that passed her exam on the first try. Now, you may not have passed your exam on the first try. I, I didn't. Um, but just the fact that she ha didn't have any sight says a whole lot.